Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1664. The topic is training and the title is Intentional Layering. So I was talking with a client recently and we were actually talking about another client. <laughs> and, uh, so essentially the, the story I was telling was I started working with a client recently and part of us working together was to address some lower back pain that they had been experiencing. I had watched a deadlift video and noticed that they had some uneven shifting in their hips, some rotation in their hips. I watched a squatting video and noticed that they were kind of releasing tension at the bottom of the squat, kind of almost like dropping into like adductor type tension. They they weren't holding uh, tightness. They weren't holding weight load stress in their external rotators of the glutes. And I let them know, hey, that, you know, these issues, what I'm seeing could be causing lower back pain. And they said, well, that's kind of funny because I'm having lower back pain. <laughs> and I was like, well, what do you know? <laughs> so we started to work together and I wrote them a new program. Uh, now, we have actually did a read-through of this program a couple podcasts ago. It was podcast 1,660. Uh, is a training podcast titled Client Program Read-Through. So I actually read through that program. It's actually available as well on our website. You can go to www.brutalironjim.com, go to Free Program Examples, and then on that page is what we call a social media highlight and it explains the program, kind of like a description, like a paragraph description of the purpose of the program. And then you can actually click to view and print the program. You can actually print it and try it and do any of the elements you want to do if it uh, seems interesting to you. Now, in that program, well, I, after I read through it, uh, you know, hopefully everybody who listened to that one, you liked the ideas and the thoughts that were all included. But what was interesting was I had gotten a video from that client. And they had shown me that when they were going through one of the movement preparation drills at the beginning of the workout, they were doing a drill called a dynamic pigeon pose. And there's a lot of variations of uh, this, this movement, but they were doing one where you alternate back and forth from side to side. And they said that they could feel that there was a uh, unilateral, like side to side difference in strength. And they wanted me to know that. They thought it was pretty cool. And I love that they sent it to me. I love doing video reviews for all my clients because it's fun to just see how they're moving and uh, how their bodies are responding in different movements into the equipment and that I can modify things to make the programming the best as possible. But they sent me the video and they said, hey, I'm noticing that there's a difference in strength and how hard this feels in one side versus the other side. And yes, that's exactly what we're doing that for. The idea of doing that movement prep, that specific exercise, the dynamic pigeon pose, is it helps to identify if that was, in fact, a contributing factor to the weakness, the side-to-side -side weakness that we were seeing. So doing that movement, we say, okay, that movement, what does it isolate? Well, it isolates the external rotators. One of the ones that we commonly have heard of is the piriformis, but it's the muscles on the inside, like underneath your gluteus maximus. And these are smaller muscles that are responsible for externally rotating your upper leg bone. So when you do squats, it like, rotates your knees out to open up space in your hip socket for your torso. And if we didn't have strong muscles in those external rotators, your knees would cave in as you went, went to stand up on the squat. And that can expose your lower back to a lot of pain. So having that as part of the movement prep ensured not only that we identified it as, oh, yep, okay, we can tell that that is something we want to work on. It then also gives him a chance to build his mind-muscle connection uh, with that weaker side. He can feel, okay, what should I be feeling? How do I get that muscle to contract? How do I, how do I develop the neurological connection to that muscle to help strengthen it and be equal to the other side. And then it also serves as a test for us. So as I cycle that back into future programming, hopefully every time we repeat it, he'll be able to feel that there is some type of improvement in how it feels side to side strength-wise. So there's a lot of purposes to that singular movement. And then also having that movement 
before we do barbell squats is a a purpose. <laughs> That's on purpose. It's a layering effect, hence the title of today's podcast. Is we have a singular movement that has layers of purposes, and then how we build the movements in sequential order within the workout has purpose. So we have that movement preparation, like a body weight related movement, just to kind of warm up the muscles, activate everything. It gives us all those benefits. Make sure that we are moving with correct positioning and correct awareness of our positioning in smaller movements before we go to the big movements such as barbell squats. And then after barbell squats, we have unilateral type movements, ones that are weighted and have kind of an aggressive way to strengthen that imbalance, but not as dangerous and heavy loaded as the barbell squats. So it's kind of like you do a movement preparation drill, which helps to identify the weakness, work on the mind-muscle connection of the weakness. And it, it does have some strength development, but that's going to be more so strength development in, in the sense of like neurological connection. You're not creating a lot of muscle damage. You're actually creating minimal, if any, muscle damage. I would argue that you're creating zero muscle damage. You're building a mind-muscle connection, which is like a, a technical aspect of strength increase and a neurological aspect. We then go and do barbell squats. We have to keep his volume relatively low because since that muscle is weak, we want to we wanna ask it to do work, but we know that its capacity for work is minimal. So we want to do a big movement because he wants to get better at barbell squats, specifically towards improving his squat bench and deadlift total. So we want to do barbell squats because not only is it a great stimulus to grow and strengthen that that muscle, but it's also something he wants to be good at, specifically for a sport uh, purpose uh, in regards to like uh, powerlifting to get that total up. But it's also just a good overall body movement. We want to have that position practice to work on technical elements to get mental confidence in the position. So we want to have the exercise in the programming, but we can't get a lot of volume out of it since we know that his volume tolerance is limited due to the weakness. So then we go into the accessory movements, which would be like step ups, lunge variations and things like that, which are going to help build up that weaker tissue but at a lower weight load so it's safer but it's still high volume so we actually get the muscle tissue damage and the adaptation responses that we don't get from the other two from the movement prep and the barbell squats so having the program with all of these elements in place is a layering effect one thing has multiple purposes and one thing leads into another thing it leads into another thing and they all sequentially have benefit so that's the idea, is the, the workout builds on itself. It establishes healthy, healthy movement patterns. Uh, we can test the issue. We can build the issue. There's just, it's, it's just tons and tons and tons of layering to what we're doing. Another example could be if somebody wants bigger biceps. Say they just want to grow their biceps. You can layer bicep development in a couple different ways. So one example could be pairing together back and biceps in a singular workout. The benefits of doing that is most back movements involve the biceps, so they would actually serve as what would be called a pre-exhaust. So what this means is when I'm doing back exercises such as pull-downs, pull-ups, and rows, my biceps are going to be involved in those back movements. The biceps are going to take some degree of stress in those movements, like going to experience some degree of stress. They're going to be cause some tissue damage, some systemic damage to the biceps is going to happen. So then when you want to do biceps at the end of the workout, in isolated efforts, you just don't need as much. You don't need as much volume, you don't need as much weight, so that lessens the joint stress. So you can still get full muscular development, but with less joint stress. So if you layer movements, for example, you could do shrugs, whether it's barbell or dumbbell shrugs, then go to a type of row, whether it's dumbbell row, cable row, uh, machine row, then do pull-ups. And a really good way to get the biceps involved would be underhand, uh, like underhand grip pull-ups. And then you would do a bicep curl movement. You could do preacher curls, you could do dumbbell curls, 
barbell curls if you wanted. But typically at the end of a workout, when you've already done back exercises, you want a lesser loaded, like a lighter weight load type of bicep. So for example, I wouldn't want to do a barbell curl. I might rather do a preacher curl. Preacher curl machine is just a little bit easier on the biceps and easier on the joints. Not easier on the biceps in regards to being less beneficial, just easier in regards to connective tissue stress and overall stress to the, the system as a whole. Since you've already done the rows and the pull-ups, you've already pre-exhausted, you've already pre-damaged the biceps. You just don't need as much then bicep isolation effort. If we look through that workout, say shrugs, rows, pull-ups, and bicep curl, if we think about the bicep involvement during shrugs, there's very minimal bicep involvement if you're doing them correctly. Then rows, there's definitely going to be a step up of bicep involvement compared to shrugs. Pull-ups, especially if you do underhand grip, it's an even more step up of bicep involvement. And then you would go into an isolated bicep curl movement. By the time you get to the actual bicep work, like the t stuff that we would typically think of as bicep exercises, you don't need as much because you've already involved the biceps in the back work. What this allows, this type of layering, would allow for shorter workouts, which allows you then to fit higher frequency of body parts within the week. So you can train all, like more body parts to a maximum frequency. It also allows for shorter workouts, which can make it just easier to fit the workouts into your life schedule. It allows for a lower required volume for bicep development, which helps protect the joints. And the lower volume actually requires less calories and protein. So it actually makes it easier to grow without having to force feed yourself as much. Depending on what results you want, layering can be incredibly, incredibly effective. In what you do in your training, ask yourself, how is it all related? How does what I do at the beginning of the uh, workout help with what I do at the end of the workout? Does the movement I'm doing now benefit the next movement? In the first example, with the squats and the in internal, I mean the external rotators, the layering was used to increase corrective exercise focus to address back pain. In the second example, the bicep curls, the layering was used to increase muscular growth. But you can also use layering to improve technique for any lift you want to increase explosive strength if you wanted to, to increase uh, performance, to maximize the weight load moved on something, to maximize the speed you can move during something. There are so many ways that you can use layering. So what I would encourage is that make sure what you're doing in your workouts has like a flow to it, that there is a building purpose that what you do at the beginning of the workout helps what you're doing at the end of the workout. We would want it all to be kind of synchronized together and everything to have as many purposes behind it all as you can and have all those purposes be related. Now, I've actually talked a little bit about layering before. It's an old, old podcast. Um, so podcast 415. I actually recorded that back in October of 2019. But podcast 415, if you did want to listen to it, you can go to our website, www.brutalarnergym.com. We have a podcast player on that site that goes back 300 episodes, but we also have instructions under there on how to go and find older episodes. So if you want to listen to it, podcast 415 is a training podcast titled Layering Purposes, How to Best Kill Birds. And that was a weird phrasing, but it was based off the kill two birds with one stone. We want to kill as many birds as we can uh, with stones. Um, you know, you know, not maybe the most friendly thing towards animals <laughs> statement, but the idea is to just have what you do have as many beneficial purposes to doing it. That's the idea. So I wanted to bring that up today because I think it's just something good that we can all kind of think of is when we're putting together a workout just to say, am I just putting together a crazy concoction of things 
you know, oh, I guess I'll do this for my chest. I'll, I'll do some chest presses because I really like this machine. And then I'll maybe I'll do some dumbbell stuff because I saw some guy on Instagram doing it this way. But does it all blend together? Does it actually sequentially have purpose? We don't want to think of exercises as individual elements within a workout. Exercises should be building on each other and there should be a flow to the workout. I think having that in mind can help us create and design better workouts. Whether you're a trainer, whether you're training yourself, just having that idea that from start to finish, a workout should be a cohesive, meaningful, purposeful group of exercises. Awesome. Okay, well, if you want to learn more, we do have our live monthly programming service. I've talked about it quite a bit on podcasts, so I don't want to beat to death. But I just want to make sure that people are aware that it's available. If you go to our website, you can click on live monthly programming. It's a subscription service. You get brand new programming every four weeks. Every Like all the programming, there's six workouts per program that you would do per week. You can do as many of them as you want, like two, three, four, five, six, whatever fits in your schedule. You repeat them for four weeks, and we send you brand new workouts. Every exercise has video tutorial, and then the the major benefit of this service is that you can ask any question you want 24-7, and you can get an answer. So this isn't just programming that you would get from any other company. The idea is that you get really good programming written by me that has all these layering purposes and a whole bunch of other benefits to it, but also that you get education. You get one-on-one education. If you ask me a question, I will answer it. So that way you get direct feedback to your personal needs. It can be about training, it can be about nutrition, it can be about fitting training and nutrition into your lifestyle. Anything you want to ask, open game. <laughs> you know, everything's fair game. Ask whatever you want. But that service is pretty cool. Uh, we have a couple of different program focal points. We have powerlifting, female shape development, pure bodybuilding, functional athleticism, functional longevity. Pick whichever topic you want. You get brand new programs every four weeks. It's $50 a month, no contract, you can cancel any time. Okay, check that out if you are interested in more training information or training examples, things that you can use, enjoy, learn from, and then build on and develop it on your own. Okay, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, brutalironjim at gmail.com. If you like our podcast, please share it. The more people we share the podcast with, the more people we can help. That's the whole point of the podcast is just to help people as much as we can. Thank you to those who donate to support the podcast. There is a high hosting cost every year on all the different platforms we want to be available on. So I appreciate the donations as they help go towards covering some of that cost. And then if you like the information we share uh, on our podcast, you can find more from us on social media. You can find us and follow us under the name Brutal Iron Gym on Instagram and YouTube. As always, I hope this was helpful and thank you for listening.